Hello everyone, time for another story. I finally decided to go for laser hair removal, written by The Writing Mephisto. For as long as I can remember, I've hated the idea of growing hair on my chest. This started when I was young and would see my father use a hair clipper to try and tame the forests on his chest and shoulders. Sometimes he would nick himself, and I would see hair with small amounts of blood on it fall to the floor, leaving small stains where they landed. Naturally, this is nothing to be grossed out by. However, for child me, it was the equivalent of watching a horror movie. Unfortunately for me, I inherited the genes which would allow me to grow myself a long-sleeved turtleneck. When my body first showed signs of growing hair on my chest, my first reaction was to dig out my father's razor and remove the horrible fuzz that appeared. The first time was clumsy and resulted in multiple small cuts, but I would rather skin myself than grow out a fur pelt. Naturally, after years of repeatedly shaving the once soft little hairs of my youth gave way to hard and dark bristles. Sometimes I would imagine them as thousands of shadowy limbs reaching out from my chest despite my repeated attempts to eliminate them. Now you may be asking, well then you have been shaving it for all these years now, so why not just continue to do so? The answer to that question is simple. Shaving takes too long and I need to do it weekly, which results in me going through razors three times faster than somebody who only shaves their face. Add on to that the fact that I have highly sensitive skin, which results in rashes and acne after each shaving session. I have simply reached my limit in tolerance of my hairy predicament. Yes, I know, comic genius. After years and years of suffering from my need to have a cleanly shaven upper body, I had finally elected to give laser hair removal a shot. I first started my research into the procedure by asking a coworker about her experience as she had gone for it in the past. She explained to me that it was rather uncomfortable. More colorful language was used, but I will refrain from repeating, and that it would take multiple sessions. I was also advised to go during the week, as their offices were overbooked on the weekends. Before I even asked her to, she also provided me with the details of the clinic she used and advised me to talk to them about any potential side effects. I thanked her and called them during lunch that very same day to make a booking. I managed to get a free consultation booked for that very Saturday. Upon arriving, I noted that their parking was packed and ended up needing to park at a petrol station a block away. Thankfully, I made the booking, or I would have easily been stuck waiting for a consultant to become available. After the usual series of medical questions, I was prompted if I had any of my own. There was only one question I had. What is the most severe potential side effect for someone with sensitive skin? The consultant explained that the heat from the laser treatment could result in my skin pores widening, which could encourage more severe acne for a limited time. She however assured me that this was quite rare, and that they would provide me with medical salves to keep my skin clean, and encourage rapid healing of any damage. I made my booking for the following Friday morning, Several times were available, as my coworker had guessed, and put in some time off from work. Thankfully, I worked through most of December, and my boss was pretty chilled with me taking some time off. This would also give me a long weekend to get over any discomfort I suffered as a result of the procedure, without needing to suffer silently at work. To help out the procedure, I was advised to allow the hair to grow out a bit. Obviously, they needed to know what they were aiming for. I remember feeling disgust every time I saw myself in the mirror. The hundreds of little dark bristles. Thousands of little insect legs attempting to claw their way out from my fleshy prison. The texture of my chest felt alien to me, as though my body wasn't my own anymore. Friday couldn't have arrived soon enough. I woke up at 5am, even though the procedure wouldn't start until 10. With butterflies in my stomach, I got dressed and had some breakfast all the while thinking about how, by the afternoon, I would no longer need to fret seeing my reflection. I was surprised after the first session was completed, 
Taking a full day off from work felt a bit extreme once I had walked out of the clinic, no later than an hour after going in. The procedure was uncomfortable, but not nearly as unpleasant as my coworker had warned me. On my way out, I was advised to try and keep my chest clean and to wear a shirt as little as possible, as the friction could cause my skin to flare up. The rest of the day was rather calm, no severe irritation, and the salve didn't cause any sudden burning as I dreaded it would. This, however, ended later that evening when the sensitivity of my skin would be proven. After applying some salve to keep my now noticeably red skin calm, I wrapped a bandage and made an effort to fall asleep on my back without getting under the covers. It didn't take long for my skin to start burning like wildfire. I ripped off the bandages and almost immediately felt some relief. The treated area being exposed to the synthetic breeze made by the ceiling fan was just what was needed to help calm down the skin. Logically, you would think that I got up and applied more salve, but it was the middle of the night. As quickly as I had shot up to remove the bandages, I fell right back to sleep. For the short time that I did. My eyes shot open again at 4am when an intense need to scratch my chest pulsed through my body. It was maddening and took all of my willpower to stop myself from practically ripping my skin off. I ran to the bathroom to apply the salve. Upon meeting my reflection, I saw how red the skin on my left pectoral region had grown. My skin burned even more intensely when applying the salve, and I noticed a small trickle of blood flow down my chest. Nothing severe, but enough that I needed to wipe it down several times before the bleeding stopped. Feeling agitated and groggy, I decided to lie down on my couch and try to watch some of the garbage they keep on Netflix hoping something there would bore me to sleep. Most of that Saturday was spent drifting in and out of consciousness. Eventually, hunger struck and I decided to make some breakfast, or rather lunch. After performing an inspection of my kitchen, I noted that there was a severe lack of dinner ingredients and would need to make a supply run. As I walked back into my bedroom, I stepped on something that made me want to jump through the ceiling. On the floor right next to my bed was a rolled up brown ball which, upon closer inspection, I noted was a horrible, hairy spider. A decently sized one to boot. I shuddered at the sight. Was never a fan of spiders. A quick bit of broom action and the unsightly corpse was removed from my room. My theory now was that the nasty little creature must have bitten my chest and caused the intense flare-up that I suffered. On my way to buy groceries, I made it a point to stop at a clinic to find out if the spider might have been venomous. I wasn't there for more than a few minutes before I was assured that the spider was a common old rain spider and that there was nothing to worry about. Upon returning home, I quickly removed my shirt and bandages again to apply more salve. As I removed the bandage, I could already see the reddish, irritated skin but it was only once I saw the spot where I assumed the spider had bitten me that I realized just how bad the skin had gotten. Several large pimples had formed on and around the spot the bleeding had occurred. I felt sickened by the large yellowish protrusions which looked like the bubbling of a witch's cauldron. There were the bright yellow ones, but some I could see were filled with a mixture of yellow and red. I went to the bathroom and began popping them, not really sure if it was the right thing to do after the procedure, but I would not see these horrible sacks on my skin a moment longer. Sometimes several would pop at once from a small amount of pressure. Others took a bit more work. Each pop was painful, and my body burned once again like the night before. The only difference being that it wasn't on the surface. The burning felt deeper in my chest. After cleaning off my chest of the horrible pus and blood mixture, I prepared to add the salve again, when I noticed something in the craters of my chest's war zone. Small white hairs were protruding from the freshly popped areas. But how could this be? The procedure was no more than a day prior, the hair couldn't have grown back already. It was explained to me that the laser had burned the hair down to the root. So unless all the procedure did was create albino hair, I couldn't understand the sudden return. I wanted to call the clinic, but doubted they would answer on a Saturday evening, 
and it wasn't open on Sundays, so I would have no choice but to hold out until Monday for my answer. A part of me considered going to the hospital, which I immediately decided against, as a grown man going to emergencies for having acne was rather laughable. That night, I took some sleeping pills in the hopes that I would gain a good night's rest. I sat on my bed and turned out the light. No bandages or sheets this time. I will just hope I stay on my back. I didn't wake up until I felt the rays of light touch my eyelids. Finally, some decent sleep. I moved my head to look down and felt severe pulling on the skin between my neck and my chest. My groggy, waking-up state transformed into pure panic in an instant. Several islands of yellow and red growths, once again all surrounding the bite mark. I felt myself gag. It was worse than having hair on my chest. Why was this happening? The simple action of moving to rest on my elbows caused several of the horrible volcanoes to erupt. One or two of them even managed to become projectiles which shot across my bed. A beam of milky yellow and red liquid sprang onto my bed. I ran to the bathroom and took a closer look in the mirror. The skin had deformed as though there were several small stones stuffed underneath it. The pressure threatening to have my chest explode at any moment. I drove myself to the hospital immediately. The hell with the bandages and shirt. I didn't even bother to change out of my pajama pants. Running into the hospital gained me several looks of bewilderment, in addition to some dry heaves as people saw the pus and blood running down my chest. Along with the horrible excrement, several new white hairs were poking out. It didn't take long for a nurse to usher me behind a curtain. She immediately began to poke and prod while asking me the traditional, Do you have insurance? What meds are you on? Have you been feeling ill prior? These questions ceased when, out of pure frustration, I looked at my chest and spotted a single black hair among the crowd of white. I pinched it between my index and thumb and gave it a violent tug. I would not allow this insult on top of the nightmare. The dark hair which I had reviled for as long as I could remember would not be allowed to join in on this display of decay. My breath was caught in my lungs when instead of the hair either slipping from my grasp or being tugged out of my chest, it instead became longer as I pulled. The nurse went silent as the hair began to grow thicker as more of it was revealed. The world became hazy and then went dark. I woke up several hours later with a bandaged chest and feeling woozy from the emergency operation that I had to go through. A pale-faced doctor approached me and informed me that I had passed out after pulling the long hair from my chest. He presented me with a petri dish, and finally the dry gagging from the last two days gave way to the contents of that Saturday's late dinner. Dozens of little white, eight-legged bodies lied in the dish, all with a crimson tinge of what I knew was my blood. In the center of these bodies was a slightly larger, brown spider. Thanks for listening to this creepy story with me. Have a good night, everyone. Love, the mistress.